Welcome students and parents to 2022 and the eighth year of the Killer Downs College Soccer School. It's going to run through a quick presentation to give you an outline of what the year should look like and what to expect from the program. First and foremost, we're up to our highest amount of students ever. So to, uh, in 2022, we have 137 students on our list. Uh, from year seven through to year 12. And we look forward to individually developing them within the context of all of our sessions, um, especially those early couple of foundational years that they need uh, in the home groups and then moving on into their after school program. In terms of our coaching staff, I just want to introduce them all individually. So Sarah Lorca has been with us for three years now. He's a former student, is a current assistant coach at Calder United soccer club and is a senior player at Calder United Soccer Club. Adam Rehorzen is our goalkeeping coach. He's also been with us for three years. He runs the Body Tech Fitness Gym in Sunshine. If you're looking for a really nice family orientated gym to join, I highly recommend you give Adam a call. He has been uh, working with us on Fridays after school and developing our goalkeepers, which um, we're all very grateful for because Adam was a top level keeper himself and runs his own goalkeeper academy as well. Joining him this year will be Tuan, who is another former student of ours, who graduated last year after spending six years in our program. Um, whilst he's combining his university studies in cyber security, he will be working alongside Adam to develop himself as a goalkeeper coach and to pass on his knowledge to our younger students. Sebastian, like Sarah, is a former student and like Sarah is studying teaching. Um, and Seb is with us now for his third year as well. Uh, obviously, this is all taking into account the interruptions of COVID. And Seb will uh, continue his development with us whilst pursuing a few options. He's got a club land as well to develop himself as a coach whilst he continues to finish his teaching degree. In the bottom left corner, we have Philip Lassar, who is a former student as well. And Philip works as an assistant coach with us working on technical areas and individual isolated training, which uh, he runs himself for, for lots of ex-students and current students uh, whilst he's continuing to play. He's at the moment has been fortunate enough to get a contract at St Albans in the MPL um, after going through uh, a state league transition period. So he's a really good example to our players about taking a step back to get into senior football in order to take a, a giant leap forward. So Philip will be working with us as well whilst he continues his uni degree in commerce. Octavio and Robbie are both students at the school at the moment and Octavio is currently completing year 12, Robbie is completing year 11. And both of them will be helping us like Philip uh, in regards to being a, a second hand or second set of eyes that can individually show players lots of things because they've gone through our whole program for several years. And we look forward to helping them develop as coaches so that in the future, they will become part of our staff uh, when they finish up at KDC. And the, the latest inclusion is, is a guy we're excited to have on board. His name is Matt Kiriakopoulos. And Matt is the current under 17s women's coach at Calder United. He has coached Bandura United for several years uh, from all age groups, men's and women's. Uh, comes to us with massive enthusiasm a great technical prowess and uh, works for Football Star Academy as well. So he's quite well versed in, in youth development. And we look forward to keeping um, Matt's ideas within our program and hopefully growing on things that we, uh, that we can see from his perspective. So that's our coaching staff. <clears throat> In regards to the program and how it looks, so this is something we've covered um, in detail in previous presentations, but the, the program will effectively for the boys be broken down into four phases, the foundation development phase, intermediate development phase, advanced development phase, and senior performance phase. Um, all of the phases are relative to the level of the player at the current time that we have them. And the idea is for them to move up the phases until they get to the advanced and the senior one in which they should spend most of their time. In. For most, most kids, that'll happen at the end of year 10. For some, uh, it'll happen a little bit earlier. In regards to our girls, because we have a smaller number of girls in the program, uh, we're, we're leaving out the advanced phase for now and we're bumping up a few girls into the senior performance phase for the first term and also for the rest of the year because our senior girls team is the youngest one we've had 
ever um, in, in that we don't have any year 12 students in, the, in that group. So they'll get a couple of years with the same players, which will be beneficial to them when they reach the senior years. Now, in regards to what each phase looks like, obviously players in the foundation one are either new to the game or perhaps haven't been taught some of the fundamentals that are important for them to be able to build a solid foundation, hence the name of the of the phase. Uh, there'll be lots of homework, there'll be lots of smaller group things where they get more touches on the ball, more repetition of movements um, and more examples of passive pressure than active pressure and full pressure um, and lots of homework tasks to help them uh, improve. In regards to the intermediate phase, these are players that have already got a decent technical foundation that can always be built on like every player in the program um, and then we'll hopefully add layers of knowledge including decision making combination with other players there'll also be lots of homework tasks for them and again it's it's optional homework if if people want to do the homework then the chances of them moving out of those phases into the higher phases increases if they don't well that's up to you in the advanced development phase um, again it's it's a refined technical base preferably on two sides of their body, but definitely on one side. Um, and the, the key difference, I guess, between the advanced and the intermediate is the actual physical capacity, so the fitness level, to be able to compete for longer periods of time. So if you're looking after yourself at home as a young player and making sure that you eat right, sleep well, and train extra and make sure, making sure that you can get around the field because, like it or not, you're going to have to run to play soccer, if you can do all of that and you've got the technical base, then you'll you'll most likely be pushing to be in that advanced group. If you lack the the physical fitness and the and the drive to do it, then you'll be either stuck in the foundation or the intermediate for a while until you change your mindset and change your um, I guess capacity to improve and challenge yourself to get better. In the senior phase, it's it's preparing kids for for matches in the first term with the um, Premier League Cup competition, so it's highly competitive for spots, um, highly difficult to get a starting place in that team. Um, but the, the beauty of it is after that first term, there's there's a whole year to continue working on things where the pressure drops down a little bit, but again, people are starting to prepare themselves for the 2023 version of the Premier League Cup. What we also do in that senior phase, because all of the other things we believe have been ticked off in the, in the previous three categories, is actually showing players some of the intricate details that you need to be a senior footballer and there's a big difference between being an, a talented quality junior player and a successful senior player but there's no point showing that to kids that aren't able to perform it at that phase in a perfect idealistic world we think every player will reach that senior performance phase in their journey but being completely realistic it's very unlikely that every player has the same amount of drive and passion for their career that doesn't mean they don't play play in the soccer program, they don't learn by being in the soccer program. It just means that they will find the level that they belong to and that's the level that they'll reach for, their, for the remainder of their time at Kilowatt College. Maybe in time that'll change, but we'll see how it goes as we go through this new era. So very quickly, what are the, what are the characteristics of players moving up? You've got to be positive. You've got to be dedicated, resilient. They're all nice words. And they, you all know the meanings of them, respectful towards your coaches and towards your teammates. Accepting of criticism is very important to improve. And criticism is always going to be about development, not about you as a person. And then the ability to reflect is massive. So after a session, if, if you're finished that session and you're just giggling and leaving the field, not thinking for a moment about what you just did or what was covered, then the chances of you retaining that knowledge and then moving up in phases as you develop will be quite small. That's entirely up to you. All right, so factors to keep in mind, the new setup is designed to increase the quality of all sessions so that everyone is grouped in an ability level that suits the session and also the coach is then able to um, move through all their progressions without having to stop for people that are lagging behind. Um, it is designed to help you understand that you have to compete. Football is competition. At top level, you know, you talk to professional players, you compete one day, you have a good session, you don't go home and think you're the best in the world. You say, I've got to have a better session tomorrow. I've got to match that session tomorrow because somebody else will. And that's the, the reality of this, this setup in the program is to actually prepare you for competition within your teams, at your clubs. 
that when you go to training, it's always with purpose. We have fun playing. Everyone loves scoring goals, assisting goals, putting in great tackles, uh, top corner saves, that sort of stuff. But you compete to play. Um, and again, whichever group you start in or you end up in, it's not a personal attack on you. If, you don't, if you're not happy with the group that you're in, then show us that you need to get out of that group for whatever reason. All right. And as we said in the previous slide, every person has a maximum level of potential they can reach. A lot of that's based on your natural genetics, which we can't control, your commitment, which you can control, your natural talent, which comes with you pl playing with the ball and practicing with the ball and doing things on your own, and then your willingness to take constructive criticism. Which is massive, absolutely massive. For all top learners, it's all about being able to think to yourself, what could I do better every single day? And then if we can build that, then we're going to build a really successful uh, program in the sense of uh, the, uh, the after school sessions being quite unique, I think, to, to football in, in Australia and helping you develop yourself as quickly as you can with as much quality. Now, in regards to what it looks like when you start to put things together, the ingredients basically need to all go into a pot and we start to push you out into that senior performance phase during a period of time. And it doesn't matter when you enter that pot, it all matters on how quickly you learn. So someone could jump from a foundation to an intermediate to an advanced within one year and someone might take three years. That's entirely up to you. We're not, we're not fast. If we need to run two advanced groups because we've got that many players in them, that's easy to change. We're very flexible and hence, hence the reason we have so many coaches on board to be able to do that. And in regards to the banana, you've all come to us as a green banana and you're all going to ripen at different times. And as you ripen, so does your knowledge improve and your experiences in the game improve and your enjoyment of the game should therefore improve. Okay, this is the one that it's very important to you for understanding the, um, the setup for the year. So if you have a look at the first side of the page where it says Wednesday, Year 7 training, that's during class time. That'll be period three and four with myself. On Thursdays, um, it's with Mr. Cataforis for the year eight group, periods one and two. And then on Wednesday afternoon, periods five and six, it's the year nine group training with me um, uh, just before the end of the day. So that'll be consistent for the whole of the term. That won't change. And they're the sessions that are mixed gender. For the after school side of things, which always start, the session starts promptly at 3.10. The foundation development phase and inter intermediate phase for the boys will be on the Tuesday after school. On the Wednesday after school, we'll have the advanced development phase and the senior development phase for the boys. And on Thursday, we'll have all three of the girls phases. So from foundation to intermediate and also the senior girls uh, that will be competing for Premier League Cup places. That'll all be happening on the Thursday. And then our goalkeeper training is always locked in and scheduled for a Friday, 3.10 to 4.10 p.m. Okay. The after-school ones will be locked like this for most likely the entire year. Um, and if we need to change it for whatever, whatever reason, we will. But at this stage, uh, they're the best three days for our program in terms of leaving your Monday off straight after a game and also your Friday off where um, we need that time for the goalkeepers and that suits, suits our program as well to wrap it up. With that. There'll be extra additional technical sessions and things like that that'll come up throughout the year, but they won't be confirmed until they're actually up and running. So let us get our heads around COVID and all of the new rules this year. Okay, so that's the, um, the breakdown. So the first three years you're in class together, hopefully you're forming friendships, you're playing together with boys and girls, and you're forming stable technique and just learning about the game without so much pressure. Then as you start to merge with other groups, we start to build squads for the 9 and 10 teams, the 11 and 12 teams after that, and you start to develop your tactical awareness. All right? And then Premier League Cup is, is like the, uh, the cherry on top of the cake for, for students that are up to that level. You get to play against the best state schools in Victoria and compete for a trophy. Um, and then obviously in all of that, up until seniors there is all the competitions for you as juniors so year seven girls team year eight boys team year seven boys team and year eight girls team you'll all be playing at the end of term one and in the nines and tens you start your competition in the first or second week of term two we'll check that on the calendars 
All right, so opportunities. Uh, this is obviously should have updated the date up there, but um, all of those things remain. Bill Turner this year is 2007 born boys and girls. Um, the Brimbank Futsal is happening for senior students in term one and then the other students throughout the rest of the year. And if we have any friendly matches and hopefully some end of season tournaments, again, taking into account the difficulties of COVID, but we'd like to go somewhere in the September holidays and we'll work towards that once we start to get some better guidelines from our government on how we're looking. A uh, good old quote about that from Alex Ferguson that you've probably all seen before about courage. Um, basically, we want to see those people that are fighting when things aren't going well because we're not expected to win every competition we play. We're expected to compete in every competition to play. And in, in order to compete, you have to be willing to lose the ball and make mistakes. That's part of life. The top players do it. There's no reason why we can't. We're working towards this slow steps to success. We've got six years with you. Um, some of you are at the end of that six years, some of you are in the first year, and some of you are smack bang in the middle. And that's fine because as you'll see in the final slide, there is something important that you have to factor in. And sometimes I think uh, students in our program forget, but I think it's a really important one. And that's why we'll finish with that later on. So your expectation, be on the pitch in your full soccer school uniform at the start of each session. You must wear shin pads and bring your own drink bottle filled with water. Um, with the COVID restrictions, we're not filling up the bottles for this year again. Um, so bring your own bottle. There are two taps beside the pitch for you to fill up in. And obviously, you know, there's all the water filters around the school. Boots and runners are required for every session. Um, now, the new rules at school are is if you want to wear your PE uniform every single day, you may wear it every single day, but it must be your full PE uniform, um, which might make life a little bit easier for some of you in terms of carrying uh, runners and things with you. But um, it doesn't mean you wear your soccer uniform unless it's the day that you have soccer. So, for example, on a Tuesday, all the all the boys in the foundation and intermediate phase, you can wear your soccer school uniform for the whole day. On the Wednesday, all the advanced and the senior players can wear their soccer school uniform the whole day. And on a Thursday, all girls in the program can wear their soccer school uniform for the full day. All keepers, you can wear your keeper gear on a Friday if you want, but I tend to see most of you want to just change quickly into your keeper gear. And because there's only a, a smaller group of you, um, it's a lot easier for you to do so. Okay. In terms of your classroom stuff, nothing changes. Your job is to be up to date in the classroom with all of your homework and your uh, learning tasks. You need to be achieving average results of at least 50%. Um, but always aiming for much more. And the reason we say 50 is that means you know half the content theoretically based on the um, on the learning task or the outcome. If you fall behind in your classwork and you don't display um, school-wide positive behaviours, then you're not going to train and you definitely won't be representing the school because if you're not training, you're not playing. That's up to you, okay? So if you, if you tell us, look, I'm really behind in my classwork and I need to have a night off training to, to catch up, not a problem whatsoever. We'd rather you do that than we find out through Compass which we have everybody's details um, from a teacher saying has not completed the task, did not turn up for the lunchtime session or didn't do the after school work, then then you'll it'll cost you several training sessions, not just one. Be smart. Most of you get these standards pretty well. The new year sevens will pick them up very quickly. Um, we don't negotiate on any of these terms. As talented as you are, we'll lose a game to teach you a lesson. We'll lose five games to teach you five lessons. Uh, we won't lose six because you'll be finished by then. You won't be part of the program. Okay. Um, in, re in relation to getting information, teams and compass. So teams, you're all in the teams uh, page. You're all in your individual groups as well, which are only used for, I guess, when we were in remote, they were used more so. Now it's all about the general communication. Um, check it before you come to school and check it before you go to bed. That's it. We've made a rule that I'm going to avoid posting during class time unless it's an absolute emergency for a meeting or something that we need to do. Um, but we'll use Compass for things like that as well. Okay? The reason we're going to avoid it during class time is I know that your notif notification will pop up and you'll get distracted by it. We'll use our year eight, eight to 12 students to, to help the year sevens a little bit with this, but they'll also get a fair bit of um, PD with me in the classroom to help them out the first couple of weeks. All right, social media, you know, we have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram page. They're only used for promotion of our program and, and celebrating achievements. Um, we have the YouTube channel where we post videos of training sessions, which 
and also the interviews we did with all the past players. They're things that as a new student, you should be having a look at, especially the YouTube channel, not so fast about Facebook and Instagram because the target audience is, is for older people and for, for kids, for families that potentially want to join us in the future. But if you want to know a bit more about the history of the program, I suggest you start having a look at the YouTube channel and see some of the people that we've been able to interview over time and, and the learning that happens when you when you ex expand your horizons. Um, basically, with social media, you should know whatever goes up may never come down. So be careful with what you post. We certainly are. And we, um, we ensure that everything that goes up from our point of view, if you're wearing our uniform and you're doing some inappropriate Snapchats or Instagram posts or TikToks, you'll, we, and we hear about it, there'll be some severe consequences because you've all signed a contract about how you use it. Okay. We're not, for, we're not worried about how long it takes for you to develop. We're just worried about how you develop. And in order that, for that to happen is you need to understand that every single person in our program is different. And the best players are the ones that make better decisions under pressure. And in order to do that, you need to design training sessions that produce pressure situations. Okay. So we've got that, that side of things is pretty comfortable with our curriculum and with the coaches that we've got on board. They're all um, very experienced in the sense of understanding how we want things to be done. But in, in general sense, it's not how we want it to be done. It's how it's done around the world at top level clubs. Okay. Like everything, you take ideas. All right. In terms of our environment, if you if you plan on coming to train before school, as far as we know, there are three sets of keys at the moment. Dante, Octavio and Robbie have them. Um, so if you want to use any of the equipment, you need to contact those boys. Um, if anyone else is desperate to train regularly and we need to cut some extra keys, I'm sure we can do that. Do not arrive earlier than 6.45 a.m. because the gates may not be open. Um, but you must be off the pitch at 8.30 and that is because you need to be getting ready for class properly, not lagging to class and then saying, oh, I had soccer training in the morning because that's an excuse that we won't tolerate. Start earlier, finish earlier. You need to change back into your full school uniform if it's on a day that you don't have um, the soccer program sessions. And if you need your clothes washed because you don't want to carry the sweaty stuff around, there's a basket that will be put on the deck of the PE office at 8.40 a.m., but, uh, sorry, at 8.40 a.m. I'll take it and put it in the washer before I go to home group. If it's not there by then, it's not getting washed. Make sure the container's left clean and tidy and make sure all the equipment that you use gets put away properly. That includes if you've had shots and you've lost the ball, you find that ball. Okay, and if you don't find it before 8.30, you come and tell me that you're going to be spending recess and lunchtime finding the ball that you lost. Okay, my my... Strong advice to you is put the goals facing the middle of the field so that if you miss, yes, you go for a run, but it's very unlikely the ball's going to go over a fence. So it's easier to collect them at the end. Okay. A little quote from Luka Modric, who, um, who's, it's an important one because we don't necessarily pick the biggest players. We pick the ones that we think are technically and, and intellectually smarter. Um, and the reason we do that is because over time you'll develop your size, your maximum height and your strength, but you can never develop your skill if you wait till you're 18 for the growth spurt. So it's very important to do it nice and early and we'll continue to do that. And if it means we lose games, that's fine. We're not here to win games. We're here to develop players. Okay. How do you get to the top? I have no idea. I, I have an idea of what may, will guarantee that you won't get to the top but no one can actually tell you that this is exactly what you need to do. Here's the recipe and you put all the ingredients together and you're going to reach the top because there's a factor of luck. There's a factor of timing. There's a factor of someone's opinion of you as a player, which you can't control. What you can control is doing all the little things well, getting to bed on time, eating well, making sure you're organized, making sure you don't miss sessions, making sure that when you are training, you're putting in your maximal energy, not just, your physical energy, but your mental energy to learn and ask questions and challenge yourself. That you're happy to play in different positions to adapt and learn the game from a different perspective. That you're happy to sit on the bench and watch and listen and talk about the game from time to time, not just always be playing and doing the same thing over and over again. Everybody has a different top. Everyone has a level that they can reach and everybody's uh, individual work towards that top is going to be slightly different. And I can tell you that from someone that's watched kids grow up and develop over years. Sometimes we predict somebody at year seven is going to have an unbelievable career. And by the time they get to year 11, they're not even playing anymore. And we can't answer the question as to why that comes from within. 
Because when you look at our environment, it's the same environment for every single person. And at your club level, yes, you have different clubs and different coaches, but the idea is the same. So most of it's going to actually come from you and what you want to do better. And you have enough resources at the Keeler Downs College Soccer School to, to improve yourself significantly. And then post that, we have enough people that we know in the game to give you opportunities at a high level if you deserve them. If you don't deserve them, don't ask for them. Always think about there's other jobs in sport and things that you can do. And as you see with our coaches as well, um, their players or ex-players and they're continuing their pathway in the game and they're able to coach and make some money coaching as well and learn and enjoy the game. So there's many, many jobs that can come out of football. Um, and I'm an example of that, becoming a PE and an English teacher. Right? The English is not really linked to football, but PE teaching from my playing background has um, given me a different understanding of, of how to be a good PE teacher. Okay. In regards to our community, we didn't get to do much of this again last year because of COVID. There's a good chance we won't be able to do it again this year, but we'd like to do at least uh, one sort of gala day or tournament, which may be run by the Applied Soccer Group in Term 3 and 4, or we might uh, ask one of the sport and rec classes to run that. Um, and then the opportunity to develop our coaching again with kill of views after school is something we want to look back into. But again, with COVID and making sure that everything, everyone's following protocols and procedures, we may have to wait a little bit to do that. In regards to equipment, because of the new change to the program, um, it's going to be the youngest players in that group. So if you're the youngest players in the foundation session, you bring back the equipment. If you're the youngest players in the intermediate session, you bring back the equipment. And obviously for the seniors, it'll be those year 10 students that are training with the senior group. Um, and that's your little mini apprenticeship about um, uh, well, but we like to have in the program to make sure that you understand everyone has their place. And once you finish that phase, somebody else will take over and, and continue doing that. It's a very important part of the, the whole journey. Don't give us any excuses or exceptions like you have to rush off the training and tell us earlier and maybe bring the equipment out or guarantee that next week you'll take it back in. And it's always, as you know, with our, with our program, it's all self-funded by, by you, the parents and, and your families. Um, so all the equipment we buy is for you and it's you know, in order for us to keep high quality equipment, we need to look after it so that we don't have to keep spending money on, on things. All right, and it's all located in the shipping container. Uh, the uniform, the jackets changed slightly to that image. It's don't have an image of it, but um, the, the new jackets are all in stock. If you need a new spray jacket, the shirts are still the same. Nothing changes there. We've got all of this in stock. Shorts, if you're playing Premier League Cup, you're going to need those shorts and you're going to need one of those types of socks. Um, I was at Adidas on the holidays and they didn't have any of them in, in the DFO stores. So we've still got them at the same price they've been for the last six years. Come and get them if you need them to start the year off. Um, try not, don't come to us on a game day saying I don't have my socks because that means you weren't wearing them in training. And if you come to training with the wrong socks, then you won't be training, not with the group anyway. It's not, it's, it's small things, it's small details, but you wouldn't do it if you're at Victory City, Western United, Pasco Vale, Hume. You'd wear the gear that they give you. Well, you wear the gear that we give you as well. Respect it. Okay, if you need the full kit, you can. All of this stuff can be collected from the office. You get the form pay the office and then come and see us and we'll give you what's listed on that list or come and try it on first to make sure the sizing's right. Your, your responsibility and you only wear it on the days that you have training and make sure that you look after it. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Calendar's there. I'm not going to go through it in detail. You can have a look at it yourselves, but you can see there's games coming up uh, on the 16th of Feb. So we've got Premier League Cup double header against Roville which will be a good test for both of our boys and girls. And then all everything that's in orange or in yellow is either futsal or inter-school sport. In orange, it's Premier League Cup. In yellow, it's the normal SSV competition. So that's all coming up. Uh, in terms of club training commitments, we're flexible, we're adaptable. If you need to you know, leave earlier and things like that, you need to let us know. If it becomes a habit where you're leaving halfway through the session, then I'd suggest you skip our session and just go to your club training because it does become annoying for coaches. You can't have three or four people leaving halfway through a session. Um, and that's all going to be your choice. At the end of the day, 
um, it's your pathway, your development. You, if your club stuff's more important, if you know that that session's going to be unbelievable, then go there. If you think you're going to get a bit more here, then maybe come late to club. It's up to you. Alternate it. Um, if you decide to leave the program before year 10, as some of our year nine um, girls did this year, you may have to move home group to allow another student to enter the program because the idea is that you've signed up for a minimum of three years and hopefully six years. Um, and the way the program's set up is we require the, the same numbers that go into PE to be going out into soccer so that it's balanced for the teachers that are teaching the PE group. Um, in regards to inter-school sports, I know it's been the last, the last couple of years have been horrible for that. We haven't been able to play much. Go and play as many sports as you can. You learn from playing different sports. When you be a, when you're a, a backstop or a catcher in baseball, you get to see the whole field, so you work on your peripheral vision. When you go and play netball, you learn about moving off the ball. When you go and play volleyball, you learn about uh, timing of movements and jumps. Okay, so there's a lot of learning to be ha had from playing different sports. Play as many as you want and as many as you can, so long as it doesn't affect your academic performance. And these are the final words I'm going to leave you with. Mr. Cataforis has been at KDC for 30 years as a teacher. I've been here for 15 years as a teacher and six years as a former student. There's a very, very good chance that we will be working with you for the longest amount of time in your football career for the entirety of your career. So what I mean by that is you will have coaches at club level. You might have the same coach for one year, two years, three years, unlikely four years, five years, six years. With us, you'll have us for six years. So the idea behind that is that you need to understand that what we are doing is for your long-term benefit, not for our personal gain. And that's the, that's the biggest, I think the biggest thing for kids to understand when you're working with us in the school environment. And the older ones, seem, you seem to be understanding it. The ones that have finished definitely understand it. But why not learn it nice and early? so that you understand where we're coming from or what we're trying to do, okay? So what that also means and what's very important for you is build that relationship with us whilst you're at school. Because as you've seen with, with Philip, with Octavia, with Robbie, with Moaki, with Thomas, um, these boys, when they, or boys and also with girls like Nav is a former student, any, anyone that we've worked with, at school that we can help them progress in their club career if they want to, we'll put in a good word for you. And we'll continue to do it because we want to see as many of you playing at the highest level possible. And in the school program, you can't play at the highest level possible because it's a training development program. But the training and development should come together with what you're doing outside of school to help you develop yourself as a player and a person. So if you add the two together, you get a strong network of people at school. You get teachers, teachers that are also coaches, uh, and then you get your coaches at your club level. And your, your idea of developing networks as a person, and your parents can tell you this, when you have a strong network of people in, in life, in work, you're able to call upon people when you need their help. The same will happen in your football career. So if you build a strong network with us at Killer Downs College, and your strong relationships with us, then it'll it'll pay you back much more than you realise when you least expect it. And that's the most important message for us to give you. So the last thing we finish on then is what do you want from 2022? If it's, if it's all about external stuff, because you want rewards, you know, I want to get a trophy, I want my parents to buy me a new PlayStation, it's not really that strong a motivation over time. But if you go to that final right-hand side of the column where it says internal intrinsic, I'm doing this because I really want to do it, then you're going to have a much better journey and you're going to have much more success because when things get difficult, and they will, you'll have the strength to get through it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please send them to me on Microsoft Teams. Or if you're a parent and you're watching this, feel free to email me.